heart of the Mediterranean Sea, the Strait of Sicily. Here, fishermen hunt the prince of these waters, the swordfish, a noble species, living symbol of the Mediterranean in all its vitality, but also a species in danger of extinction. It is not so much traditional fishing methods unchanged for 3,000 years that are responsible. That technique is like a fair challenge. One man sights the prey, another tries to harpoon it. If a boat is lucky, it can catch one, sometimes two, swordfish every three or four days, but only in the permitted season. What is threatening the swordfish with extinction is fishing with drift nets. Every night, every night and every day of the year, a massacre takes place at sea. Senseless, short-sighted killing that includes pregnant females and very young fish. Furthermore, it seems there is no way to impose legislation or establish quotas that will be respected by the killer fishing fleets. Luckily, the problem is attracting more and more attention. And at last, attempts are being made to try and stop the massacres. Growing numbers of people are becoming involved in campaigns to protect and repopulate the waters of this sea. This is the final phase of an operation that culminated in saving the lives of two marine turtles. They had been caught in a drift net and condemned to death. Now that they have a new lease on life, Will they return, by the light of the full moon, to lay their eggs on certain beaches of the Mediterranean? Vacation time brings chaos to Italy's shores. The growing presence of man is certainly one of the reasons why the Mediterranean marine turtle is on the brink of extinction. Summer crowds are denying sea turtles access to those special sandy beaches where their instinct tells them to lay their eggs. They used to be one of these sacred places on an island located at the very heart of the Mediterranean, Lampedusa. On the south coast of the island, the beach behind that line of rocks is where female turtles always used to lay their fertilized eggs after the mating season. Always, that is, until repeated invasions by summer tourists deterred them from seeking out these warm coastal waters and so stopped their annual pilgrimage to the beach. But on the night of October the 3rd, 1990, the situation changed. A turtle came out of the sea. The beach on Lampedusa was deserted. There was nothing to stop the female moving away from the water, laying her eggs and burying them in the sand. After so many years, what had happened to make this possible? The answer lies with a group of young volunteers who guarded the beach throughout the summer, keeping tourists and sea traffic away, and so preserved the bay's seclusion. When the eggs hatched, a new generation of Careta Careta turtles, 68 in all, came into the world and quickly made for the sea. 
This is a milestone event for the ravaged waters of the Mediterranean. The sea can still be saved if plundering by industrial fishing and poisoning by pollution are curbed in favor of restoring and preserving the environmental balance. This is the only possible way to save the Mediterranean's natural identity. A complex, composite identity. A magnificent ensemble of shores, bays, large and small islands. Fiery, snow-capped peaks like Mount Etna. Rapidly changing coastlines, sometimes flat and marshy, sometimes sheer cliffs. Between the shores of Africa and the European coastline lie two and a half million square kilometers of water. Stretching 4,000 kilometers from Gibraltar in the west to the Dardanelles in the east. The most southern point of the Mediterranean is the Gulf of Sidra that lies just above the 30th parallel on the coast of Libya, 2,500 kilometers below the most northern point, the Gulf of Trieste. Between these two extremes, from the snows of the Alps to the sands of the Sahara, the world of the Mediterranean offers an astonishing range of variety. And yet, however great the geographical, climatic, and environmental differences may be, they are what give this sea its unmistakable identity. The Mediterranean shores vary widely, but the overall effect remains the same. A series of continuous contrasts between a mild climate and sweltering heat. Between crystal clear waters lapping at rocky shores and the muddy shallows of coastal marshlands. stretches of coastline where nothing seems to move. While in other areas, the wind blows steadily all year round. The tides are never particularly high, but in certain zones, the coastal environment is completely transformed every few hours. In contrast with other zones where the cliffs have never changed. All contrasts along the Mediterranean shores seem to disappear at sunset and at dawn. That subtle light is the great leveler cancelling the sharp distinction between rocky coasts and mud flats. The Mediterranean, in the words of Fernand Brodel, its most important historian, is a sea made of mountains. Skeletal rocks, he wrote, like crooked fingers poke towards the sea, and from the sea towards the sky. Rocks like those that form a barrier between the mountains and the sea in the Balkans. In the south of Italy. And in Spain, where the Pyrenees plunge down towards the coast. Woodlands slope down to the sea. Spurs of what remains of the Mediterranean's great forests. The green vegetation in sharp contrast to areas on the southern coastline scorched by the sun, like the barren lands of the Jebel in Cyrenaica. 
Yes, to the south, the sight of grass is a rarity. While to the north, flowers bloom everywhere. The famous garden of the Hesperides in Greek mythology was to be found in the Mediterranean. Bouquets and aromas with a touch of salt carried on the wind and the flavor of the earth and the characteristic Mediterranean maki or scrub vegetation. course of time, the Mackey has been enriched with plants imported from all over the world. The papyrus that grows in Sicily comes from Central Africa. found throughout the region come from South America, as does the Bougainvillea. All examples of a migration of flora covering plants of all kinds that have blended into existing flora to create the Mediterranean garden. The Mediterranean is full of enchantment and natural deceptions, even mirages. Looking at a palm grove growing at the mouth of a wed, suddenly it seems to be reflected in the water. A spirogyra, a shy alga that has no wish to be seen. Salina in the Aeolian Isles is a volcanic island. Its two volcanoes are extinct. Such craters, long since dead, are well known for their harsh, barren terrain. But on Salina, we find another deception. On the island's peaks, always shrouded in cloud, the extinct crater hides an extensive tropical forest. The once infertile terrain now bursts with vegetation. hardly ever rains in this corner of the Mediterranean, humidity collects in such great quantities above the island that it stimulates the growth of giant ferns. A magic forest. Like the thick forests of Gorgonians that carpet the seabed in the deep water around islands where the sea is still clean. Like the Cyclades Islands to the east, the centrally located Igadian Islands, and the Kirkana Islands to the south. The Gorgonian may look like a plant, but it is actually a colony of microscopic polyps. It is a flexible coral that is precious enough to demand protection. And in fact, the problem is being handled by teams of specialists from the Mediterranean's leading hydrobiological institutes. Volcanic islands provide another characteristic Mediterranean habitat. The seabed around the Aeolian Isles are located a series of particularly active solfatara, or sulfur banks, that spew millions of liters of sulfurous gases into the sea every minute. The gases often solidify on contact with the water, creating the impression of snow, another Mediterranean mirage. sea comes into direct contact with the Earth's fiery bowels. Now, 
life on the Mediterranean's ever-changing seabed remains intact only in protected areas. Only here is it possible to study the astonishing evolution of underwater life. Darting sharks are a permanent feature in these parts. Whales are seen less frequently. Marine giants like this killer whale enter the Mediterranean from the Atlantic Ocean in search of food. Often, it is death that awaits them. Here, off Sardinia, a large whale is dying, caught in the nylon mesh of a drift net. It's a sperm whale. The victim and the location have changed, but the story remains the same. The ever-present struggle between life and death that is played out every day in this sea. In this case, a diving team is fighting to free the giant mammal and save it from dying slowly from hunger and suffocation. Nobody is sure how the huge creature will react when the divers approach. One flick of its tail is enough to kill a man. Luckily, the whale seems to understand that the small being that has appeared at its side is trying to help. Perhaps it even tries to cooperate in the difficult rescue operation with weak tail movements that momentarily release the tension of the mesh. The diver works just inside the whale's mouth to cut free a section of net caught in its teeth. The second diver is a whale expert. He checks the condition of wounds on the whale's back where a harpoon and line is embedded. Evidence of an unsuccessful whale hunting expedition, when and where nobody knows. The moment the whale is finally freed from the net, it starts to sink. Have all efforts to save its life been in vain? the other members of the team go into action. Using a rope secured to the support ship, they haul the whale to the surface where it can breathe. Throughout the operation, the whale doctor is at the animal's side, trying to encourage it. The patient responds. It starts to move and to breathe. Out of danger, the giant marine nomad sets out to roam the seas again. Despite the difficulties, if the commitment is there, it is possible to save all the sea's creatures, big and small, and the sea itself. In France's Camargue region, a race of horses enjoys man's protection. The race in question takes us back to the days of Greek mythology. After the Trojan War, Homer's hero Diomedes accepted voluntary exile on the western shores of the Mediterranean, where he dedicated his life to raising his beloved horses, the legendary ancestors of this race that knows no equal for strength and beauty. This story is our introduction to a very particular world the Mediterranean's marshy shores and coastal swamplands. Here, a characteristic feature is the often undefined borderline between the sea and the land, as can be seen in the Camargue to the west, in the Veneto region in the central Mediterranean area, and to the east around Scutari in Albania. In regions like these, fresh water and salt water meet to create a maze of sandbanks and an ever-changing environment. The ideal environment for the preservation of a delicate natural balance from season to season. As the year unfolds, several fertile areas on the Mediterranean coastline undergo extreme changes as the climate turns from temperate to torrid and vice versa, from hot to often icy cold.
natural scenarios like this, the wild Mediterranean Mackey provides an invaluable wildlife haven in each and every season and for all species. Other such havens, more important because of their size, can be found around the estuaries of several rivers. There are wildlife conservation areas on the banks of the Ebro River, the River Rhone, and the Naretva and at the mouths of other lesser rivers. desperately in need of protection, a vast area around the Po River estuary is already a wildlife haven. This is the river's so-called greater mouth that forms the rich breeding grounds for fish known as valleys that, since protection began, have become one of the Mediterranean's most important coastal parks. More than 400 mosaic environments made up of jagged little islands, too numerous to be counted, can be found in Italy alone. This is the island of Giannutri in the upper Tyrrhenian Sea. geological phenomenon that reflects those natural contrasts so typical of the Mediterranean. From flat, sandy islands like Gerba to arid, rocky outcrops like Monte Cristo. From islands forever swept by the winds and the tides like the Egadean archipelago to those in Dalmatia closed in narrow bays that make lakes out of the sea. same area between Sardinia and Corsica lies one of the Mediterranean's most dazzlingly beautiful rings of granite islands, the Maddalena Archipelago. One of these islands boasts a unique feature. Its beach is pink. The color is created by a mixture of sand and microscopic points of coral. The rubrum coral that in these waters grows blood red. A living, precious stone that flourishes, or rather used to flourish here. Now, too much has been harvested. Man has been using coral to make jewelry since prehistoric times, with demand increasing steadily as the centuries passed. But it is the devastation of the last few decades that has compromised the survival of this prized Mediterranean coral. This seemingly unreal environment is created by erosion. Rocks that appear eternally resilient are actually measures of time. In fact, their erosion documents the Mediterranean's geological changes and devastation. A great change that took place six and a half million years ago when the Mediterranean dried up was discovered only recently. A geological cataclysm blocked the Straits of Gibraltar. And deprived of the inflow from the Atlantic, the Mediterranean's waters slowly evaporated. To reveal 
reveal a massive trench almost 3,000 kilometers long and 1,600 meters deep. When the Straits of Gibraltar were reopened, the Mediterranean became a sea again and swallowed up all signs of the evaporation. Although the evidence was always there on the seabed. Oceanographic research vessels have been used to drill up to 150 meters into the Mediterranean floor. This led to the discovery of a layer of salt crystals over 1,000 meters thick. Deposited at the time of the great evaporation. Waters of rivers such as those we now call the Rhone and the Nile could no longer empty into the sea and plunged instead into the massive empty trench in waterfalls that were over a mile high. Nowadays such events seem to be pure science fiction but they are supported by climatic as well as geological proof. At the present time, about 4,000 cubic kilometers of water evaporate off the Mediterranean every year. If the Straits of Gibraltar were to be closed again, by the year 3,000 or 4,000, the Mediterranean would once again become a dried up chasm. This hypothesis is obviously no more than a theory. Even so, it gives weight to the description of the Mediterranean as a sea that does not offer an immobile geographical scenario. In fact, it is the Mediterranean's innocence that confuses us. It always seems the same, and yet, the truth is that the sea is in the throes of continuous transformation. Nowadays, that transformation is due more to the actions of man rather than to the uncontrollable forces of nature. Will we allow the Mediterranean to die from pollution and neglect? It is up to us to save this sea that will always be one of our planet's natural gems.